It's rivalry week. It's finally here. So let's get to it. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. You know we always appreciate it. And we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started today. Well, the rivalry week is here, the one we've been waiting for. Obviously, there's the big game between the big two, but a lot of teams are playing rivals this week. Plus, we'll recap this past weekend. I got a lot of thoughts and opinions I want to share with you on that, see if you agree. And our Big Ten Top Ten observations by me over the weekend, a tr another tremendous weekend around the Big Ten. Be sure to subscribe down below real quick if you don't mind. And follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. So regarding Rivalry Week, I want to share this with you right off the top. I was watching Urban Meyer on the Fox pregame, postgame show over the weekend, and he said something interesting about Rivalry Week from when he was at Ohio State. He said that once the, the Saturday before that we just got done with, he said, once that game is over, it's over. The coaches don't even go over game film. They put it away. It's all about facing Michigan at that point. And he also tells the kids, you're done with pads. No more pads for practice because the next time you put your pads on, the next time you hit somebody, it better be maize and blue. So that's how he prepared for the Michigan game each and every week. Speaking of Michigan. They won this weekend, but this was the toughest battle they've had all year at Maryland, 31 to 24. Of course, you all know Jim Harbaugh suspended, sitting at the team hotel again. It was Michigan's 1,000th win in school history, and they remain undefeated 11-0 uh, ahead of this uh, upcoming showdown with Ohio State. It had been the first time all season long that Michigan had been scored on in the third quarter. They blanked everybody. So that was the first. And it's the first time they've given up 24 points. Nobody has put that many points on a scoreboard against them. All, and it wasn't even close. So Maryland um, either had figured something out or I've been telling you, you know, Talia Tungavoa, a pretty talented quarterback. They have some weapons there at Maryland. Plus, I always talked about how that game was sandwiched right in between the Penn State and the Ohio State game. Very ideal, I think, uh, for Maryland to make a run at it. And they were down by a score a lot the second half with the ball, with chances to do something about it. But uh, one of the heroes, of course, Blake Corum, as he usually is, scored two touchdowns in this ball game. But I will tell you something else. The most valuable play that he made all weekend was the last one. It was a fourth and one, fourth and two. They needed a first down to seal the game. He he got like, he got about an extra two inches on the deal. It was that close. It sealed the game and it helped Michigan get the win and escape out of there, out of Maryland. So Blake Corm, I thought that was the most impressive play, not the two touchdowns that he scored in that ball game. Um, Mike uh, San Rostro, a two interception day. Defense did a lot of things. I pointed out on our Saturday live show a couple observations. Michigan had two safeties in this game. They also had a defensive score. So that's 11 points. If they, if they don't get that, uh, those special plays like that, they might not win that football game. They, they really are. I mean, Maryland had upset on its mind. There's no question about it. Now, Michigan still did Michigan things. They held Maryland to 15 net yards rushing on the day. So they were still solid up front. The Wolverines got a little banged up, and this is what we need to pay attention to this week, rivalry week, the injury reports, and I don't know if Michigan's going to be forthcoming with updates on this as we get closer to the week, kind of keep Ohio State guessing. Roman Wilson got rocked. He's their leading receiver, had to leave the game, don't know his status at this point. Miles Hinton, offensive lineman, uh, left the game as well. 
I think they were down to a fourth string lineman at one point in this ball game. So, and then, you know, I've talked about this again on our live show on Saturday. And by the way, we are going to be going live, as you can see on the crawl down below, Saturday after the Ohio State-Michigan game. As soon as it's over, we're going to go live on this YouTube channel on Lockdown Big Ten. But um, an observation I made, J.J. McCarthy, remember, he didn't throw any passes in the second half against Penn State, only completed 12 passes against Maryland. over the, So I don't know if something's up. I don't know if they're – holding back from uh, any game film for gamesmanship with Ohio State. Not sure. Maybe something to keep an eye on. Maybe not. But it was just an observation by me. And, of course, they will be uh, taking on an Ohio State team that is coming off a pretty easy 37-3 win over Minnesota over the weekend. Uh, Kyle McCord, 212 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But, again, I am most impressed with their running back, uh, Travion Henderson, Ever since he came back from his injury, they're just a different team. He's just the glue that makes everything go. 146 yards, two touchdowns, and a 75-yard uh, run in the third quarter. And uh, he he is looking fantastic. I think offensively, Ohio State is hitting on all cylinders now. They're healthy. Marvin Harrison Jr., only three catches for 30 yards and scored a touchdown, but they rested him largely in this football game. And uh, also good to see for Buckeye fans, uh, Emeka Egbuka healthy, uh, getting in there five catches and 83 yards. So uh, I think on the offensive side of the ball, Ohio State is pretty healthy and ready for the Michigan Wolverines. Defensively, I think they're still a little bit banged up, but we'll see how that pans out by the end of the week. Again, I think intel and information is going to be at a premium this week on who's healthy and who's not. People keeping things close to the vest before this big game. Uh, and the defense, look, they did a pretty good job on, on Minnesota. They had an interception and a fumble recovery and didn't give up a touchdown. So, actually, if I had to say right now, today, we got all week to hash this out. I think Ohio State's playing a little bit better football right now than Michigan going into this game this weekend. But we got plenty of time to go back and forth on that one. And one other note I wanted to make mention of in this opening segment, of course, was Iowa and they beat uh, Illinois 15 to 13. I told you take the under on that one, right? It was uh 30, 31. They uh, only scored 28 points in that game total combined. But uh, in fact, it was two, nothing Iowa, typical Iowa fashion, They're getting a safety leading two nothing at one point points at a premium. They get the win. They get the win at home. And on top of that, they lock up the West. So Iowa, given everything that they've gone through, and we've documented every bit of it, every step of the way on this podcast, injuries each and every week, somebody else gets injured, the lack of offense, Brian Ferentz, the beleaguered offensive coordinator, son of Kirk Ferentz, the story loomed large all season long. They win the West. They are going to play the winner of the Michigan-Ohio State game for the Big Ten Championship the weekend after next. Uh, that atmosphere there at Kinnick Stadium on Saturday was incredible. And also that last defensive stand that held uh, was amazing. But I, my favorite moment of the game was the point where I will realize it was going to win and offensive players coming over to uh, show their appreciation for Brian Ferentz, who, as you know, will not be back next year because the, the offense struggled so much. Basically a delayed firing, if you will and everybody's showing their appreciation. And then as soon as the players were done hugging him and, and high-fiving him and shaking his hand, he turned slightly, and there's his dad, Kirk Ferentz, the head coach, waiting his turn. It started off as a handshake, but turned out as a, a pretty nice hug and a pretty nice moment. In fact, we got if you're watching on YouTube, I've got a picture of it on screen right now. That's a handshake. And then uh, a second later, it turned into the big hug. Father, son, what a tough year they've had, but what a successful year they've had that was my favorite moment uh, of the whole week and i might be tipping my hand here to our big 10 top 10 coming up later on on the podcast which we'll have in our final segment but uh, nevertheless they're going to the uh, the big 10 championship game a couple other notes from that one caleb johnson ran for a 30 yard touchdown with 440 to go to give iowa that 15 13 lead nine and two nine and two very impressive for the Iowa Hawkeyes, given all that they uh, went through. By the way, Illinois still needs a win to become bowl eligible. So that's coming up uh, around the corner as well. They got one more game left. We're going to talk about that briefly in just a moment. If you want to hit us up on any comments on anything you saw over the weekend, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter or X at TalkBig10, number 10. 
our website, talkbig10number10.com, and also on YouTube. We take the comments as well. So I want to tell you about some observations I had from the weekend still. Uh, some congratulations to a couple other schools that uh, made uh, made their mark. Uh, one of them surprising, I think, if you were to go back this summer and look into uh, what was coming up this season. We'll get to all of that and a peek at the weekend rivalry games coming up. It's a loaded podcast here today, all right here on Locked On Big Ten. I will tell you about listening.com. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you like the Big Ten or a Big Ten school because you went to college at one of the conference schools. I did. Went to Indiana, right? And I wish I had listening.com around when I went to school. And whether you're a student or a working professional or an academic, listening.com is an app. And it turns academic papers and textbooks and PDFs and websites and emails into audio. You can listen to them on the go, wherever you are. I mean, you talk about multitasking. You talk about saving lots of time. Uh, Listening.com is just for everybody. Listening.com has several features that you'll like. Uh, There's the one-click note-taking. You're listening. You like something. You click. It highlights a sentence that you're listening to, and it puts it into a notepad so you can refer to it later. They have automatic chapter detection. It helps you jump to the chapter that you need right away as data tables. All right. If you're listening, how you can remember all those tables? Well, it pulls the, the data tables so you can review them visually in the app. You can simplify your busy life and save more time. Go to listening.com slash locked on and get your first three weeks for free. That includes a bonus week. Usually it's just two. So three free weeks. Again, that's listening.com slash locked on. So let's get into a couple other things that I noticed over this weekend, and I'm sure you did too. Would like your uh, take on it as well. But first of all, let's offer congratulations to uh, Northwestern and Coach David Braun, no longer the interim head coach. He is now the head coach. What a great job. Inherited the team with the hazing situation and Pat Fitzgerald, and he takes over a team and they win six games. They're bowl eligible. Still another game to go. And they beat Purdue 23 to 15. So six and five. I don't know if a lot of people saw that coming. They won one game last year. Uh, Cam Porter scored two touchdowns. Ben Bryant, Cam Johnson on a 52 yarder late in the third to get all the momentum. Uh, Purdue, a little disappointing uh, with quarterback Hudson Card. He was a late scratch, by the way. Uh, Ryan Brown came in. He threw two interceptions. Penn State and Rutgers. Look, it was 27 to six, but the game unfolded the way I told you it would because I'm convinced that. Penn State gets in its head a little bit, its own head sometimes. This game was 10 to 6 at the half. And I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago how Penn State, they lost to Ohio State, and then they came back flat the next week because they were disappointed in the Ohio State loss. And they almost lost to Indiana. I mean, the game was tied with 90 seconds to go at home, by the way. Kind of the same deal. Coming off a disappointing Michigan loss. Rutgers comes in, hangs tight, uh, hangs uh, tough with them for the first half. It's a 10-6 game, but Penn State pulls out and uh, and wins the game. Now, there's some news out of this one because, first of all, we were watching this, this Penn State game because they fired their offensive coordinator this week, right? So new offensive coordinator in there. Drew Aller took a hit on the shoulder. He was out, so they had a lot to overcome. They kind of leaned on Katron Allen, who rushed for 69 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And Penn State, uh, Rutgers helped him out a little bit too. Three turnovers. Penn State turned those into 17 points. And uh, did you know a little, well, I don't say fun fact for Rutgers, but fun fact for Penn State. Did you know they beat them 17 straight times? Yeah. How about that? Um, The streak continues. Another interesting game, Michigan State had to come from behind at Bloomington to beat the Hoosiers 24-21. Caitlin Hauser found Malik Carr with a 36-yard touchdown strike with a minute 19 to go to take the lead. IU missed a 49-yard field goal at the end that would have sent it to overtime. Weird situation for the Hoosiers if you watch this game. They were getting ready. It was fourth and one. They were going to kick a uh, 45-yard field goal. There was a timeout. They then decided they were going to go for it on fourth down. They barely get the yard. If they don't get the yard, the game's over. Uh, then a penalty later backs them up. They end up kicking a 49 yard field goal. So the 45, which they almost attempted and they missed it. It sailed right at the end. 
and they don't send the game into overtime and they lose at home there uh, 24 to 21. Curious circumstances at the end of that game. And then if you stayed up for the late NBC game, Wisconsin, overtime, over Nebraska. This was uh, drama because both teams really needed uh, a win. Well, they both need a win to get a bowl bid. Wisconsin accomplishes that. Nebraska now hanging on. Got to get a win next week or this week. 24-17 in overtime. couple of thoughts. First of all, Nebraska – Nebraska's had a problem turning the ball over all year round, and they've gone through a few quarterbacks. They've had some injuries. Chubba Purdy comes in. I thought he looked like the best out of all the quarterbacks they've had with Heinrich Harburg and Jeff Sims all season long. I thought he looked the best. Now, he hadn't been healthy earlier on. He's the brother of Brock Purdy, the starting quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Came in there with a 55-yard touchdown run, just just boom. I didn't know the guy had that kind of speed. Just outran everybody. And then had a 58-yard touchdown pass, too. So I thought he was very impressive, even though they lost. Tanner Mordecai, I, I give him credit for coming back. The guy broke his hand and had surgery like four weeks ago and came into the game. Uh, there looked like there was some doubt early on whether he could play because the, I think his first pass just went to nowhere. It looked like he couldn't grip the ball. But he played well. He played fairly well in that game. Braylon Allen was another one. Running back, been out with injury. He wasn't even supposed to play. Decided to give it a go during warm-ups. He ends up scoring the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Scored a couple of touchdowns on the day. So take your hat off to him. And Wisconsin is now bowl eligible in Luke Fickle's first year. So great job there. All right. So with that all set, all but one game left here on the regular season. We uh, look ahead to rivalry weekend actually starts on Friday. We've got Iowa and they're taking on Nebraska. That's the 12 o'clock on Friday. Now this uh, Iowa and Nebraska at 12 o'clock on CBS and the black Friday. And uh, then Penn state takes on Michigan state. That's at seven 30 on NBC, but that's Friday night, black Friday day after Thanksgiving. And that game is at Ford field. That is not at Michigan state. Michigan State's had a little bit of success against Penn State, so this is going to be worth tuning into. And a busy day for the staff at Ford Field because Thursday they'll have the uh, the Lions-Packers game for Thanksgiving Day. They'll have to change everything up, paint the field, all that, get it ready for Penn State and Michigan State. Saturday, the big one, Ohio State and Michigan, 12 o'clock noon on Fox. The winner of this game wins the Big Ten East and goes to the Big Ten Championship. And as I mentioned before, right after this game, Locked on Big Ten on YouTube, our YouTube channel here that you're watching on now, many of you, we will go live as soon as the game's over. I'm anticipating that being about 3.30-ish on Saturday afternoon. Indiana takes on Purdue also at noon. That's at 12 o'clock on the Big Ten Network for the old Oak and Bucket. Northwestern plays Illinois at 3.30 on the Big Ten Network. Wisconsin plays Minnesota at 3.30 on FS1. And Maryland closes out the season uh, against Rutgers, 3.30 on the Big Ten Network. So that is what Rivalry Week looks like this week. Can't wait. Been kind of building up to this all season long, haven't we? It's been a lot of fun. And uh, we'll see how this all plays out. So uh, I have my moments that I, I, you know, I take copious notes during the weekend. Well, sometimes I do, but uh, I've compiled another list of my top 10 observations of the Big Ten. I'll share them with you. We'll see if your favorite moment made the list as well with our Big Ten top 10. That's all coming up. Also want to give you guys a special thanks um, for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate that, especially you everydayers out there. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe down below, uh, share, and uh, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten, no matter where you get your podcast. All right? Got the top 10 from the week uh, coming up next right here on Lockdown Big Ten. FanDuel. You can score early and often this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Money line, winners and losers. No point spreads, anything. Just money line bet, you're good to go. It's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about FanDuel, you've been hearing me talk about it all season. You hear your friends talking about it. You hear your coworkers talking about it. Everybody's doing it. Get in on the action. There is no better time. 
and it's an easy app to use and you can find all sorts of things like point spreads, player props, over unders, everything like that. Speaking of over unders, I told you, right? I the last time we did that, I said take the under on the Iowa Illinois game and the under hit, even though it was incredibly low. You're like, how low will they go? I can't go under that. Yes, you can always with Iowa. Take the under. And then uh, regarding Monday night football, the Chiefs and the Eagles. I think the Chiefs are two and a half point favorites right now, according to FanDuel. I kind of like the Chiefs. I like Patrick Mahomes in this one. Uh, we'll see. Maybe you disagree. So anyway, you can check that out. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the rest of the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. <clears throat> Okay, so let's check out one of my favorite segments all week, the Big Ten Top Ten, according to me. I'll share these with you. We'll see what you think about them. I'm going to put them on screen if you're watching on video. If not, I will uh, try and describe this in detail on audio. So here we go up on the screen. Go full screen with this, and we'll check it out. All right, so the first thing I'm putting on here at number 10 is Iowa's Kinnick Stadium, that crowd versus Illinois. That that crowd, that's a fun crowd. That's always a fun crowd. And the later it gets, you ever get a night game out there or late afternoon game late in the year, that place is a blast. Got to put that on the bucket list of a place to go. At number nine, I got Ohio State's Jack Sawyer. He's a defensive end. He had three tackles for loss versus Minnesota on Saturday. So he gets the number nine spot. At number eight, Nebraska's Chubba Purdy, their quarterback. I was just talking about him coming into this game. A 55-yard run and 58-yard touchdown pass. He was very impressive. It's too bad he hasn't been the starter all season for Nebraska. You got one more game left to try and become bowl eligible. At number seven, I've got Wisconsin's Braylon Allen. Again, he's he was injured. He wasn't even supposed to play in this game. Comes in. Play Saturday night against Nebraska, gets the game-winning touchdown in overtime and sends the Badgers into bowl eligibility. So uh, gutsy effort by him. Northwestern is bowl eligible. Going to put that whole fact on at number six as they beat uh, Purdue over the weekend and, of course, uh, on the week that David Braun had the interim tag removed from his uh, coaching title. He is the head coach moving forward for Northwestern. That was the right move. Number five, Michigan State's uh, Malik Carr. He was the one that caught the 36-yard touchdown pass from Caton Hauser with 119 to go in Bloomington on the road to beat the Hoosiers' first road win in the Big Ten for Michigan State this year. We go to number four on my uh, top 10, Big Ten top 10 list. Uh, Michigan's Derek Moore. He uh, scooped up a fumble, fumble recovery touchdown. And without that defensive touchdown, Michigan may have been in dire straits up at Maryland over the weekend and number three we'll stick with michigan and running back blake Corum. i told you it was great that he had the two touchdowns earlier but it was that last fourth down run he had to keep the chains moving and help them burn the clock and get the win at number two ohio state's uh, travion henderson this, i told you this is the glue that makes their offense go 15 carries 146 yards and two touchdowns over the weekend fantastic job by him and number one uh, I was Kirk and Brian Ferentz. Again, the uh, handshake and the embrace with everything that was going on this season, I thought was a great moment for them over the weekend. I thought it was the best moment of the weekend in the Big Ten. In fact, I'll put this back on screen for you again if you're watching here. on This right here, I thought this was the best with everything they had gone through over the weekend. That was pretty pretty special moment. Uh, anyway, that made my list. Let's see what you say. If you agree or disagree with any of this, you can feel free to hit me up. You can uh, contact me on any of this stuff. Would love to hear from you and take your opinion. You can hit me up on Twitter at TalkBig10, the website, TalkBig10.com, number 10, and on YouTube as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe before you go and help me out. Click that little button. Doesn't cost you anything, and it gets you in our Big Ten Club, right? You can follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And I want to tell you about uh, Locked On because we've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. 
Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It'll be worth your while. And uh, one more reminder, of course, we will be going live on this channel as soon as the Ohio State-Michigan game is over on Saturday. But until then, enjoy all of our podcasts that get released first thing every morning. Love to have you with us. Uh, the audio uh, comes out like at 4 in the morning. It's there all day, and the, the video comes out about 6 a.m. So please enjoy that. Share it with your friends. Tell everybody about us. Word of mouth is great. And uh, until then, I've enjoyed this visit as always. Can't wait to our next talk tomorrow for Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman.